Hello, my awesome third grade artist. Today, we're gonna to be starting a new project. We are going to be doing something a little different. It's getting close to the fall season, and so fall makes us think about things like corn and hay, hay uh, bales of hay and, and pumpkins, and just all these things that make you think of things that are harvested or happen during the fall season. And so one of them that always reminds me of fall is corn and particularly flint corn. So we're gonna be looking at a specific type of flint corn called gem corn. So before we start this project, teachers in your lesson plans, I want you to find where I've got written the seed stories, glass, gem corn and artful heirloom. I want you to search for that on your YouTube and show the students that video. And it talks a little bit about glass gem corn and how it was created. But um, like I said, let me show you a picture. Like I said, this is all originated from flint corn that was originally grown here in America by the Native Americans. And then over the years, um, they haven't grown it as much. It's kind of slipped away from for the most part. But then as you'll see in the video, a man from Nat with Native American heritage has created this beautiful gem corn and these are real. They look, they don't even look real, all these beautiful colors, but they are, and I just love the variety that you get with all of these colors. So that's how we're gonna be painting ours today. So we're gonna start by drawing our corn and you're gonna get a long piece of paper. And the first thing that we're gonna do is fold it in half. That's gonna kind of help us as a guide. So you fold it in half and put a crease. That'll give you a line in the middle and that's gonna help you know where to draw. So this is really long and almost runs off my camera. I'm gonna try to fit it as best I can. You're gonna draw with a pencil to begin with. I'm gonna use a Sharpie and we're gonna be using two types of Sharpies for this. We've got a super Sharpie that has a thicker line and then uh, just this one of these extra fine point Sharpies that's gonna give us a much thinner line and it'll be good to have variety. So we have a variety of line sizes in our drawing and our painting. So when you use your pencil, you need to make sure you're drawing really light because you're gonna trace over it with your Sharpie. So we're gonna start, you're gonna find that middle crease that you made, this is mine, and we're gonna draw a long oblong shape, kind of like a long oval. I'm tracing it with my finger first. I'm going all the way from the midpoint to the bottom. So when you do that, um, try to trace with your finger and get an idea and then use your pencil and lightly draw it. And then you'll, you'll later go back with your Sharpie, but right now just be drawing with your pencil kind of come over here. So I'm gonna go down and come up and give us that long corn on the cob shape. Okay, now we have to make our kernels. So I'm gonna use about two fingers in here to, to help me measure. Teachers, if they need help drawing straight lines, you can give them a straight edge or a ruler. I'm just gonna freehand them but I'm gonna go about two fingers and I'm gonna go across. We're making horizontal lines first. Still drawing with your pencils, you will go back later and outline this. If you use a finger space, it will help you keep them all pretty much the same. So you don't have some teeny tiny kernels and some gigantic kernels. Okay, now we have to make our vertical lines. So we're gonna do the same um, spacing. I may just use, cause mine's kind of narrow, one finger, you see what looks best. And then again, I'm gonna try to keep this as straight as I can. Because this comes out so wide over here, there would be some that little part right here. Teachers just be walking around as the students are doing this, making sure that they've got the concept of what we're doing here. And these are gonna be all your kernels. So after you've drawn them, 
Uh, let, actually, let's go ahead and do our um, husk, and then I'm gonna come back and show you another step to make these really look like kernels. But let's go ahead, while we've got this super sharpie and we're still working this, let's make the basic outline for, for our husk. So I'm, I've kind of already drawn them lightly with my pencil, so I want you to do the same. You're gonna start somewhere in the middle and just make a curvy line that kind of goes up. There's no, doesn't have to be exact. They don't all have to look the same. They're just kind of random curvy lines. This one is on the front, so it overlaps the one I'm making right now. So you won't see all of the one that I'm making right now. It overlaps some of it. And this one too. Pull it down so you can see the top. Okay, there's another one. Need probably about five or six of these. Then we'll go back and um, make some lines in the middle. While you still have your super sharpie out though, I wanna show you about making these look more like kernels because kernels are not perfectly square. They're more rounded. See how those look like rounded um, rectangles? So we're gonna go in and every kernel, you're gonna go around the corners and round your corners. Just kind of going back over it and making my corners round, trying to keep my lines very straight, not sloppy. Gonna go around and then I'm gonna round that corner. See what I'm doing there? I really enjoy doing this. Teachers, you could put some music on and let the students just really get in the zone and do this. It's very relaxing. So you're gonna do all of your Every single kernel needs to have a round edge. I'm gonna do one more row. You're gonna do the whole thing. So I'll have a little bit to paint when I start to paint. Take your time. It needs to be like, looks like one continuous rounded rectangle, every one. And again, teachers walk around, make, the, make sure the students are understanding it. Sometimes you can do one kernel for them and um, kind of give them an idea if they're struggling. You do one and let them watch you. Okay. I like the super sharpies for this. They're a little bit thicker and they get it done quicker. All right, so you would do the whole thing. I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna take my extra fine tip sharpie this one and i'm going to make some extra lines in the husk just to make it look like it has a little more variety so i like to have variety of sizes of lines in my art variety is good in so many different ways a variety of colors a variety of shapes we're going to have a variety of line thicknesses line widths so you're just going inside each husk and making some more curvy lines. When we paint, we will just paint right over this because these are permanent markers and they won't bleed. So that's why I like using the Sharpies. And then you might have some pencil lines in your drawing. Once you have finished with all of your Sharpie work, you can go back, it won't run or bleed, and you can erase all of your pencil lines. That's not kind of how the top of mine looks, okay? All right, and the next part is the fun part. It's painting all these beautiful colors. So we're gonna be using pan watercolors this time. They've got a variety of these beautiful bright colors. You need a little bottle of water and you need soft brushes for watercolor. So I've got a red flat one and then I've got these green rounded ones. Either one's fine and a paper towel. So I'm gonna start with my kernels. So this is glass gem corn. You can use whatever colors you want. You can make a pattern where you repeat them in a certain way, or you can just repeat them randomly, but repeat your colors as you go. So you see here, I have some blue and I've repeated it throughout. I haven't really done a pattern, but I'm repeating my colors. So I might go in first, like let's say I'm gonna find my blue. I'm gonna paint my blue. I'm gonna get my brush wet. If it's too wet, you can drag a little bit off. Then I'm gonna go in this beautiful blue with the water and I'm just gonna paint. And I might go ahead and paint all of the ones I want blue. So if I want that one blue, I may want this one blue and some farther down, 
however many you want blue, go ahead and do all of your blue. Every time you change color, you need to rinse your brush. So I'm rinsing my brush. I'm dragging it along the bottom of the container to get all the paint off. Drag a little of the water off, and then I'm going to go with some orange. I need a little more water. So the more water you add, the lighter the color will be. So I'm going to go with some orange there. And you see it bled into that a little bit. That's okay. And I'm going to do some orange there. And I'm just going to, I would go down and paint all of my places that I want orange. And then you just go with your all of your colors that you want. When you get ready to do the husk, you see on mine, I use shades of green. You could bring in some brown because a lot of times, by the time they pick the uh, corn, the husk have died. So you might want to uh, do some brown or some of these golden yellow colors. You decide what you want and you just paint right over the Sharpie and get a little more water. I just paint right over it. As long as the watercolor is still wet, you can continue to bleed and smooth it out, but it's, it still looks pretty when you don't, when you have some places that are dark and some places that are light. So you will finish painting your entire corn, and then, teachers, you're gonna let the students cut them out, leaving a white edge around the sides. It's, it looks a lot better if they'll leave a little bit of white edge so they don't cut into their corn and you'll see your nice side edge of your corn. So leave that white edge and then I've provided this long bumpy paper for it to be glued to and it's gonna do best if you use your hot glue guns on this. The bumpy paper stuff doesn't always stick as well to it. So teachers, you'll need to use the hot glue gun for that point. Do not let the students use it. If it gets too hot, it might burn them but you help them glue that on there. And then when you're finished, make sure their name label is affixed to the back. And I cannot wait to see what these look like. I'm gonna put them on Artsonia, and then I'm gonna pick some of my very favorites for the art show. So really try to work hard, do a good job, and you might see your art on Artsonia or even in the art show. Thanks so much, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.